Marky Mark's DIY. Hi, I'm Amber. I'm Mark. And today we're working on the truck. cleaned up and we're halfway put back together the manifolds on valve covers back on half of the wiring harness is back on uh, I heard something fall and I can't find the coal wire so that's probably laying underneath of the truck I've got a few things to do underneath I've been kind of avoiding that I figured I'd uh, do whatever I can up top and then go down below and that's kind of where we're at. You know, when you set the manifold back down, you want clean surfaces. The gaskets uh, need to be where they're supposed to be, not moving. Other than mind your work. Replacing the intake manifold gasket. Is that it? Because I've seen you had a bunch of other stuff that you got. I did get a bunch of other stuff. There was a manifold gasket kit. Uh, I got a bunch of oil because we're going to have to change the oil a couple of few times. Because right now the crankcase is full of water and as you saw, sludge. So that's got to get out of there. That's not going to do the bearings any favors if it stays in there. Uh, a couple of gallons of antifreeze, obviously. That's got to be replaced. Uh, what else did I get? Oil filters. Mm -hmm. And I also got a pitman shaft seal because when I was down underneath, I noticed that was leaking. Ooh, what's I, a pitman gas seal? I never heard of that that's before. That's the steering box, the shaft that comes out that actuates. It goes back and forth and actuates all the steering mechanism underneath. Mm -hmm. And it's got a seal up in there that uh, is kind of looks like it needs to be replaced so I figured as long as I'm up here working underneath the truck and already dirty it's not a great big job it can be fun to try and get the seals out because they're in a tight spot but there's little tricks to do that so so this is what happens when you mix oil and water it turns to Liquidy peanut butter. Gross. This is not good for your motor. You need to get it out of there. So before I put it back on, I'm going to clean off what I can. And I'm using uh, MEK, which is uh, methyl ethylene ketone, otherwise known as carburetor cleaner in a big uh, jug as opposed to the spray bottles. So I used a uh, toothbrush and dipped that in the MEC and got off just about what I could and it came through pretty clean and uh, you can hose uh, any other residue off and while I was at it the ports were also quite gummy and gritty so I got out what I could with the mech on those too so the uh, valve cover was just a bit just as bad but I was able to actually blow that stuff out uh, that was a little bit easier instead of having to use the toothbrush method so the cleaner the better and why is that good to have that out sludge is bad water will ruin your bearings so if that's inside the motor you can look forward to doing a little bit more major repair in so, short order so sludge would be water uh, it's what happened well generally uh, speaking no sludge is just slimy goo which can be old oil, uh, but condensation and water expedites that process. You're always going to get some water in there. It's a byproduct of combustion, and you're always going to get a certain amount of 
bypass through the pistons as combustion occurs, although minimal, that could take many, many, many hundreds of thousands of miles or tens of thousands of miles, whatever, to accumulate. However, if you blow a gasket and all the water leaks inside the, the engine, it's going to happen right quick. Just a couple miles in this case. So here's a shot of it all cleaned up and uh, what you want it to look like. Back to uh, bare metal, aluminum in this case. And surely there must be a better way to put this on. Perhaps a screwdriver that's not quite as long so I can do what I need to do. Too close. Things have a habit of flying. Well, we're getting the last of the parts back on for the golden moment of turning the engine and seeing if it works. Uh, it's all put back together and we're ready to fire it up. So, are you ready? Don't hit the gas, just turn the key. Okay. Go ahead. that to open so I can make sure the radiator is full and I'll probably run it down the road to get that all circulated so I can uh, change it again. I dump in a can of seafoam to help clean whatever sludge is in there out and it's entirely possible I may have to change it all again after that. We'll see what happens. I'm prepared. I have two more filters and a couple more gallons of oil. Uh, that's kind of important. We don't like sludge. So, there you have it. One intake manifold replaced. It looks like my thermostat's opening up. 
And the engine cleaned. Well, we're working on that. That'll take uh, an old change or two and running it up and down the road with some sea foam in the crankcase. This stuff is good for transparent. This stuff is great for uh, marine products. I never marine motors and such. I never tried it on cars, but it's good for any motor. I'm in no way affiliated with Seafoam, however, everybody and their brother swears by it. I've yet to have somebody say it's not a good product, so we'll find out. And there you have it. Until next time, don't forget to like, because I did a lot of work here. You should like that. And subscribe, just in case it blows up. There could be a sequel to this. Who knows? And we'll see you again. Marky Mark, extraordinaire! Air, air.